What's up? Let's talk about cross-site scripting. So cross-site scripting, or XSS, it's called XSS because <laughs> is uh, cross-site scripting is a very common vulnerability on most websites. In fact, the OWASP, that is the Open Web Application Security Project, has published a list of like the top 10 vulnerabilities of which cross-site scripting is a part of it, is three out of 10, uh, which is scary that it affects so many. So because of that, let's understand uh, what it is, how it works, and then let's talk about some mitigation steps to help us maybe not get hacked. That'd be nice. Really cross-site scripting happens in three common ways. There's more uh, for sure, but these are the three common ways where it plays out. Uh, the first way is called a reflected attack or a reflected vulnerability. And it's kind of what it sounds like. It's when you reflect user input back to the user um, and in an unsafe way, they can totally abuse your system. What does that mean? Uh, say for example, you have a search engine and uh, somebody types in your search engine, uh, some word that's a bit hard to like, somebody types in your search engine, Durgatna. Okay, uh, and then you know they search for it. The next page they see results, but the search engine says no results for Durgatna, the, the thing they typed in. Uh, and, and so they're reflecting the user input back to the user. If they're not careful, if the user enters like HTML in that search field, they reflect back processed HTML. Um, and you might think that's great. Maybe they can format it and have like a bold search query. Uh, yes, it's maybe good for formatting, but they can also load random JavaScripts on this page. They can use a script tag, call out to like evilsite.com slash hacks.js. That's just gonna be loaded and run in the browser. And that's pretty scary. They can, using such a attack vector, they can read your local storage. They can sniff cookies, although maybe not all cookies. And there's a lot that they can do. They can even just get information about your browser. There's a lot they can do. So reflected XSS is, is one way uh, cross-site scripting happens. Number two, we have persistent cross-site scripting. I was gonna say propagated, I don't know why. Persistent XSS. Um, I, I'd, I'd say persistent XSS is way more dangerous uh, because it affects just such a large amount of people. So how it works is this way. Say for example, you've got a website Say for example, you're actually, let's, let's, let's assume that twitter.com is compromised. Let's assume twitter.com is compromised. So you are on Twitter, uh, and you should follow me by the way. Um, so you're on Twitter, and you're composing a little tweet, and you tweet it, and all of your followers, let's assume you have like 200,000 followers. Um, all of your followers see your tweet. Next day, you decide to post a tweet, and you're going to use some HTML to format it, maybe add an underline, so you'll do the, the U, uh, HTML, HTML tag, underline your text, send it, and you notice, oh cool, my, my tweet is totally underlined. And so, now that you know that twitter.com shows HTML in the timelines of the people who follow you, 200,000 people, you can totally add a script tag. You can add a script tag and send a request to fetch JavaScript and execute it from anywhere. Um, and then 200,000 people download and execute that script. And you've got access to a lot of their stuff. Dangerous, very, very dangerous. The third way uh, XSS shows its head is, it's called DOM-based cross-site scripting. DOM being the document object model, the, the, the HTML of a website. Um, and, and, and this is largely um, to talk about client-side uh, XSS. What we've talked about so far has just been server-side vulnerabilities, where the server receives user input and sends HTML um, directly back. But this can happen on the client side. Say, for example, you um, include some type of server sent secure JavaScript in your client side page um, and you trust it, so it is good. Uh, this thing can just on the client side receive user input and then hy hydrate your DOM or add it to your DOM um, without being safe and just embed extra HTML in your DOM, including script tags and so on. But also, you, you could also include scripts um, from someone you trust, but if it's closed source, say for example, an analytics tracker, you can just add like a copy paste to one of these analytics trackers. Um, and since it's closed source, you don't really know what it's doing. So it could also just like fetch some random JavaScript file and eval it uh, or execute it 
and same thing. So um, those are the three common ways cross-site scripting occurs. Let's talk about how we can mitigate them. There's, of course, many, many, many ways to mitigate this. I will share two of my favorites, but this is by no means exhaustive. In fact, I'll add some links to the description um, for more resources and so on. But, I mean, the first way for me is just to, like, not trust anything, right? Like, sanitize all the inputs I find and treat everything as hostile because it might be and you don't want to pay for it when it is. So, um, sanit and I don't just mean replacing, like, angular brackets with HTML entities. What I do mean is using like purpose-built encoders that encode input and then decode them for my use case as I need to in a very safe way. That is my go-to. Um, number two is to use something called a content security policy. It's a very fascinating topic and there's a lot to be said. In fact, it probably warrants its own video. Let me know in the comments if you want a video on content security policies. Um, but content security policies or CSP on the surface um, are, are ways to granularly specify who your website is allowed to communicate with and how. So using a content security policy, you can say, I only load images from these domains, from these hosts, and I only load JavaScript from these hosts. So even if there is an errant script tag on your page to like hackers.com, your content security policy is going to block that and the malicious JavaScript will never run. Those are my two go-tos for mitigating this. Um, what are yours? What are your go-tos to mitigate it? What other security concerns do you know that you want me to maybe talk about or that you want to talk about yourself? Let me know in the comments or at me on Twitter. But for now, that's been it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.